It's the A to Z podcast. I'm Zach Jackson. He's Andre Knott. A to Z podcast.com, facebook.com slash A to Z podcast. At Akron Jackson, at Dre Knott on most of your favorite social media platforms. We get here, we talk sports, we talk life, we venture into mature slash immature subjects, and we often say four letter words. So if that's not for you, or if there are kids around, or if you're in a work environment, we don't want anybody to ever get in trouble for listening to A to Z. So put on your Anybody earbuds or come back at another time. Um, our longtime Anybody sponsors. At, at work. <laughs> this is what we do. We talk over each other. Uh, our longtime yeah. sponsors are Seen, the Honeymoon Grill, and American Fireworks. Dre, if you've been out and about at all, you've seen American Fireworks is back in the billboard business with 4th of July just around the corner. They're offering buy one, get one free. The, the coupon is at AmericanFireworks.com. If you go into the store, which is in Hudson, not far from the Turnpike, um, you tell them A to Z sent you. They've been known to take care of you, but they're always open at AmericanFireworks.com. Um, I know a lot of hey, the. Hey Z. Yep. Z, are you allowed to? Uh, are you allowed in your life to fire off fireworks? Well, I always follow the rules. Um, but yeah, so like around my neighborhood, like people I, fire I, them off all the time. So I'm assuming yes. Right. Okay, because I I think my neighbor and I are going. You know, since I'm home for the Fourth of July. I think my neighbor and I are going to go in and go go to our favorite fireworks company and, and get some buy one, get one free. All the problem is our wives said we can't shoot them off. <laughs> so I was maybe going to invite you over for the 4th of July, or maybe it is a listener out there that wants to come by. Um, and I'll, I'll provide alcohol and food. I won't give you a ride. you got to stay social distance. But I think my, 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 my neighbor and I are going to buy a bunch of fireworks, but our wives said we can't fire them off. So. <laughs> Yeah, um, so he wants to get the fireworks guy drunk and then mess with fireworks. Yes, this is br- this is brilliant oh, marketing. No, 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 no. <laughs> well, okay, no, no, no. Well, I, you can bring some. You can bring a partner. You can bring somebody else, and you can have all the all the truly you want. <laughs> truly has become big in, in my house over your favorite beverage. I don't drink any of that shit. I'm I'm straight to whiskey at this point in time. As you can see, I need a podcast that's going to make us laugh. I'm going to be completely honest. Um. So go ahead with the, get the sponsor. Scene Magazine, we appreciate and we love you guys. Please give Scene Magazine a, a, a read, a call. Go to scene.com if you can, if you're looking for stories. Um, they had a great endorsement from Russ Mitchell from KYC uh, a few weeks ago that, uh, you know, no news is bad news. We need to pay attention uh, to the news that's going around us. The scene is doing its best in a very difficult time uh, to continue to give us news that's new, uh, that, that informs us. And right now being informed, I think, is one of the most important things you can do to yourselves in 2020 just my endorsement yeah um so like almost <laughs> all of the fireworks displays are canceled right for for yeah. safety reasons uh and i think even beyond like the virus reasons um authorities are stretched out and budgets are stretched out right so um, you ain't lying. <laughs> yeah so like uh that's just how it's going to be so american fireworks is, is where you have to turn you got to figure these Fourth of July celebrations are going to be home like we've been home. Um, last week was 100 days since sports shut down. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing, yeah. man. Um, <laughs> you know, we've, we've marked these days. I know the 100th day, I want to say it was last Wednesday or Thursday. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter. Either way, it doesn't matter. Um, and we've tried to mark this and we've tried to stay positive, and I think we will continue to do that uh, as these leagues try to. But, you know, some of the numbers about – I think – and look, neither one of us will ever, ever, ever try to say that we're an expert upon anything that doesn't have to deal with um, food and alcohol. But I just think there's so many questions still about this virus. I know some people, it's been, I mean, let's be honest, over 100 days, it's hard for any of us to keep concentrated upon one thing or to even keep one story straight. Um, and I think with this virus, it, it, it's showing that. And the closer we get to thinking that we're getting sports, um, the more questions still haven't been answered, Zach, to be completely honest. Sure. We I can talk about, you know, go ahead. No, I, I think you said it right. I mean, I think by now we all know that it's clear that we're going to have to live with this virus to some level, right? No matter where we live. Right. Even here where we've been very fortunate that most of us don't live on yeah. top of each other, right? Um, yeah. However, that being said, you have to respect that there's going to be complications getting sports back at every level, right? And... um. You know, as much as we've talked publicly and privately about admiring the NFL's gung ho, we're going to do our off season. The fact is, in four weeks, they're trying to get ninety players together to hit each other on every play, and a hundred plus staffers to be able to be there, and that's going to be complicated. 
right? It uh, ain't happening, Pat. It ain't happening, Captain. I want it to happen. I want it to happen. But think about what you just said. We are going to have to live with this. You're absolutely right. But the Peachtree Bowl of putting out, what, 100, 200 people in a small area. And let's be honest, in a football training camp, you're going to be in a small – you have to be in small areas together to – like I heard someone say the other day, um, maybe it was today, someone say, well, you know, these guys don't need all those camps. They play football their whole life. You know, once they get together, they'll get rolling. No, that's not how it works. No. Um, football, I, in my opinion – and we've talked about this with offensive line play in normal years, Zach. You and I have had great conversations about how the lack of hitting uh, throughout camps and how they've tailed camps back. And we're okay with that. We understand why that's happened. But how that changes how the running game takes, you know, three weeks, four weeks into a season to get going. I just I, – I don't know. There are, I'll admit this, and I want this to be a positive podcast. There are days where I wake up and I – feel like we may not see sports as we know it in 2020. I hope I'm wrong. I pray I'm wrong. But I just don't see how you're going to put – I mean, Zach, high school guys, quarterbacks are going through drills right now, and they're not allowed to hand off the ball to the running backs. Right. <laughs> I mean – Sure. We'll see. We'll see. Right. Right. Um, you know, I, there's been full days, Dre, where I've just said I'm going to stay away from Twitter. If I have to send something or if I have to do something work-related to post, I'll do it, but I'm staying away. But yesterday I wandered on at midday, um, frankly, because golf and NASCAR were under a rain delay at the same time, and I, I wanted to see what the update was, whether it was a good time to take a nap or not. And I saw that uh, the commissioner of baseball had sent a letter to the Players Association. We're st- in baseball, we still send letters in 2020. Right. They might as well fax it to them, right? And, and, and I'll just say this. I've said this too. Like, throughout this whole thing, since it started back in March, it, we record this on, on early Monday afternoon. Um, I've tried to make Monday morning feel like Monday morning, right? Like, I've intentionally saved the work, saved a task of some sort, a call to make, whatever it may be. So it feels like I'm starting my work. So I get up and it feels like I'm starting my day. But Mandra, you start clocking off these Mondays and you you just wonder virus or you know, virus complications or no virus complications, which as you mentioned is over our head, like now we're the next week's the last week of June and there's still no fucking baseball. Right. And we still don't know how any I like the, the baseball thing has been a catastrophe. We've talked on this podcast about leadership or lack of leadership. Um that it took this like what kills me is it's taken this long to get to the – like, nothing's changed, really. I mean, obviously, we've had outbreaks in, Cal- in, in Arizona as well as Florida. But some of the, the little things that they've gone back and forth on, you can't tell me um, that if you want to get something done, anybody that's negotiated to get a car, negotiated to buy a house or build a house, negotiated anything, you would know if you want to get something done, there are ways to get things close to done, Right. And Major League Baseball's done nothing of the of the of, they've done nothing of that. It's obvious that some owners don't want to play baseball this year. And to me, why not just be just be clear with that and say it? I, I, we would appreciate that more than the bullshit negotiations that we've seen or heard. And obviously, I don't know all the negotiations. I don't know everything that's been said. Uh, I do know though when you want to get something done, and I I understand that we're going through a pandemic. But why did it take until last week? Uh, what, the, what, the third week of June for the actual commissioner to get face-to-face six feet away from the guy that he was negotiating with. If it mattered, they should have been negotiating face-to-face and had this figured out a month ago, Zach. Like, I just, I'm, I'm so damn frustrated. I love baseball. I get all the jokes. I get when Zach says, here's the, the A to Z, 60 seconds, you know, of baseball. I get it. But baseball, I can't – we can't – people that love the sport, we can't protect an inept sport that it will not get out of its own way. Like, at some point in time, if you want to be one of the big boys, you are one of the big boys. you got to act like one of the big boys. And they don't. Yes, the NFL may be full of you-know-what about trying to start the season. And we'll probably only get two preseason games. The NBA is – like, you, we may not see NBA basketball – but they are trying, and this week is going to be a trying week for the NBA as all these teams and all these players start going towards Florida. And we know that there are going to be a lot of tests, and a lot of these tests are going to come back in a way that's going to scare teams and scare players. But they are trying to make take steps forward. 
What's one of the lines that Zach has always said on this podcast, and I always don't want to agree with it, but it does ring true. Perception. Perception is reality. The perception is, is yeah. re- yes. And the perception of the reality is right now, baseball, MLB, you look like you don't know how to get out of your own way, while the rest of these professional sports are at least digging, trying, having conversations to make us believe we're actually going to see that sport played in 2020. Yeah, I'm, I mentioned um, that this is Monday afternoon. Four Mondays ago was Memorial Day, Dre. Three weeks wow. before that, we talked about we need baseball to, to, to have some dates set by then, right? Right. So four right. weeks after that date that we made up, just, just a conversation piece. Cause sure. Right. And, and, and let me stop and give a shout out to our, our, our friends that do radio for a living. My God. I mean, we tried twice last week to do a podcast. It didn't work for one of us. It didn't work for the other. I thought, well, what are we going to talk about anyway? But imagine trying to do this right. every day. Jeez. I, don't. Um, I shouldn't say that word, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, you, can say um, that word. <laughs> you know, I, I just I I, <laughs> I I felt a little sanity in my life on Saturday morning when I got up and drove and met a friend of mine and watched some Manchester A's baseball for a few innings. You know, um, I, I know they're back playing at, at the lower levels for the most part, and that's been signed off upon. Um, Canal Park has opened its gates to to allow some of the local teams to, to play, which is good. I know. Out in Youngstown, uh, they did the same thing at, the, at where the Scrappers play. Uh, Eastwood, the name escaped me for a second. Um, but the gates at Progressive Field remain shut, right? Um, yeah, well, there's been practices and things going on, but yeah, games. Yeah, right. We don't know. I'm working on. I'm working with Coach Borman to try to get a, a baseball game down at Canal Park for uh, some teams that, that mean something to me. Um, I mean, at this point, we got to make the best of what we got. And this week is going to I mean, I, I thought I wanted to bring this up to you last week, the whole Ohio State making players sign waivers. I know you're not a parent, but your brother coaches on the collegiate level, and I'm not trying to put anybody to the spot. I don't know if I could sign off on that if my kid was going back to Columbus. But I don't know. This is all like we're all in this, we're all in this force that we've never been in before, right? Sure. And I just know the – the, I know the, the initial feeling is like, damn, I sent my kid back to campus and I got to sign a waiver. Um, I don't know anymore, Zach. I feel like that's – Well, uh, I'm glad you said that, of, Dre. You know, Go ahead. Because um, I think the prevailing opinion has to be, okay, if, if you're not ready, if somebody's not ready, um, then that's fine. I think we have to understand the extraordinary circumstances here, right, in this – Extremely selfish society, extreme 24-7 access to get online and say what matters to me about anything, right? Uh, Especially being cooped up for 100 some days, um, the anger comes out. But I think the reality is here, Dre, whatever happens with baseball, whatever modifications are made, we have to do that. You know, if high school and or college football have to play in the spring and we have to move the non-contact sports to this fall, for one time only. Would it be weird? Would it affect a certain amount of the population in different ways? Yeah, but if that's what we have to do, we have to do, right? Before we I'm let this anger out. I'm all for it. Yeah, before we right. let this anger out, and, and I know I, I said this on your radio show, feel a little bit like Phil Savage saying this this stuff, the staff infection wasn't in the GM manual. But we have to understand, <laughs> as mad as we are at our kids' principal and our boss and the governor and whoever else it may be, there is this is unprecedented, Right. Like, and even sure. as we get back and even as we try to move forward, which we have to, there's no running away from that. Like, there's going to be awkward moments. There's going to be tough decisions. It's not going to be the norm. And we have to accept that and take a step back and be a little less selfish and say, okay. And hopefully a year from now, headed to 2021, we'll have a normal baseball season. We'll be headed to the all-star break Absolutely. right now. Right? we headed to NFL the key, training camps. Go ahead. I'm sorry. But like you said, the key word though, we gotta be salt. We gotta be less selfish. Yeah. And that's a hard thing for that's a hard thing for American people to do. I don't know why. I'm not trying to start controversy or whatever else, but that is a difficult thing to do right now for the American people. I have my thoughts and reasons why, but obviously I don't have every answer, and I'm willing to admit that. But you're right. And and and, and, and the other thing that you say is true. 
there's so much frustration with people. They've been cooped up for, and I'm not making excuses. We're human beings. We're not used to being told what to do. And we're not used to being told, and it's unfortunate because you would think that we could look back at history and we could look at where we've come and where we've gone and go, you know what, a little bit of sacrifice for now to enjoy. You know, I've, I've told this story a lot. and I've, I don't know if I've told it on this podcast or not. My dad's not some philosopher of some great um, – <laughs> he's not Socrates. You're not, not going to read about him. He's a country bumpkin from Alabama uh, that's found his way and had a really successful life. And I had to think about this as we were doing Father's Day. And shout out to uh, Mr. October, my favorite Reggie Jackson, <laughs> fuck the one that, uh, that played for the Yankees. I'm about to Manchester, uh, Reggie Jackson. Um, you know, my dad told me when he dropped me off at Kent State, he made it real short and real simple. Sacrifice the next four or five years. My dad knew I wasn't going to graduate in four years. That was my dad being well. <laughs> Scout, he scouted me out pretty well. He knew. And he was right. But he just said, and he, and he simplified the process for me. He was like, dude, I know you're going to do stupid shit. I know you're going to enjoy your life. But please, be willing to sacrifice most of who you are and what you want to do and what you think is cool. Sacrifice the next four or five years of your life so you can do whatever the hell you want and you can have more fun. That advice, Zach, you know my dad. That's about as deep as he gets. But it was very apropos, and it was something that actually stuck with me. And it got me through. And then my mom was pissed off by the time I was 30, still not married, still didn't have kids. And I just pointed to my dad and was like, Dad said, I give up four or five years of my life. I can do whatever the hell I want. And I'm doing whatever the hell I want. All very minuscule compared to what we're talking about. But the point was, it's okay to sacrifice a little bit now if the payoff later on is going to be big and worth it. And in my situation at 42 years old, I can tell you, I still, I don't remember much. But I remember at 18, my dad dropping me off telling me that. And that stuck with me when I was getting ready to do some dumb shit back on the campus of Kent State. <laughs> we're, we're, back, we're, serious, we're back in that mode. Like, we got to sacrifice a little bit right now. And if we sacrifice a little bit right now, and I know it's hard. We're 100 some days into it. But we'll get back to normal, hopefully. And, and all of this will be a blip on the screen. I don't know if everybody's capable of doing that, though, Zach. Hey, potential sponsors, if you're listening, we got a new segment. Some dumb shit I was about to do by Andre. <laughs> <laughs> I could do. I, we could. We could do. A, we could do a part of the podcast every week where I could talk about <laughs> dumb shit. I almost did. <laughs> Twenty-two summers ago, we were sit, parked under that bridge on the West Green at Ohio University. I was getting dropped off at of college, and my dad said, "Wash your hands and marry a rich girl." <laughs> wow. You listened. <laughs> Did you not work out. The wash you your listen. hands would be like one of the three top most talked about subjects in the world. I almost said trending topics, but in 1998, if you just said trending topic, nobody would have known what the hell you're talking about. Right, 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 right. <laughs> I knew Reggie was on it. Why? He could have. You know, in 20 in 2020, he could have thrown there. Wash your hands and wash your ass. Yeah, I mean, wash your hands. Like he used to tell us that all the time. Like. He's very, my dad's very matter of fact, right? And yes. uh, lots of wisdom, but, you know, not long winded in it. And one time, I don't know, this was around the time of the, of the infamous tire changing story. <laughs> but he, he kind of sat, me and Brody were both there. I don't want to say he sat us down, we were somewhere. And he just said, like, we've been very fortunate because you guys, you act dumb, but you're not dumb. You know, you're good people and, and you've earned the respect of people around here and, and I, wherever you've gone away to college and in your chosen professions and whatever. And like, you know, just just wash your hands and be good to people. And like, you'll you'll continue to just, you know, do all right. And it was like at the time you're looking at him like, really, that's the best you got. But you get a little right, older. Right. That's the pump up store. Yeah. <laughs> but you get a little older and it's kind of that way. And yeah, I just I, I see, you know. I hate when we even venture into, and it's usually sports related, thank God. But when we venture into right. the anger and the vitriol and the other stuff we see online, because we're not we're not going to change anybody's mind on that, you know. I think no. over the last decade, both of us, as we've developed some additional emotional maturity and life experiences, we've we've still not walked away from every Twitter fight or spat, but we've walked away from our share, right? Um, yeah. 
Oh, trust me, the last two weeks. Yeah, I, I I'm, I'm stopping going back and forth with people. I because you can't, right? You can't change people. No, unfortunately, you can't. Um, look, I and racism is showing. Racism is showing us that, and I mean, I mean, we know, we know that it's there. I've had some unbelievable conversations. I've had some. Un, I may not do after this. I may never do radio again. I will, not that I, not that that's news to you because I've I felt that way for a while. This has just been a good reminder <laughs> of it. Um, and I think there's going to be things about life that will change for all of us. But I'm admitting um, I'm happy with the podcast. I'm happy talking with you. I like having conversation with people. But I think you use the word bitter. Like, I just, I don't know. And, like, some would say it's a, a side of me getting soft. And maybe it is. Or maybe it's just a side of, of me just being a little bit more mature in life and just going – it ain't worth me trying to put, in, and I'm thinking of my words very cautiously. And you know that's not how. And if you listen to this podcast, you know I usually flip from the, sure. <laughs> I flip from the lip, I flip from the lip and let it roll. Um, I just, I'm. It's, it's almost like an awakening of can't fix stupid. <laughs> I hate to go Andre Not Senior and and Reggie Jackson <laughs> on you, but it's true. You can't fix stupid. And some people are so set in their own ways that they would rather sit on the dumb side than actually move forward yeah. to a better place and a better side of this. And that, it's hard for me to, to understand. Um, it's hard for me to, to put in words sometimes. But some people are stuck on stupid, and they would prefer to stay stuck on stupid rather than move forward. So yeah. God bless well, You know, we, we, we've, we've gone back and forth on this, right? Because I, I think I, <clears throat> I, I admit it. That, I, I mean, it looks foolish right now, but like when we had to shut down in mid-March, right? I really thought that for three or four weeks, we wouldn't have sports. We wouldn't have a normal life. Yep. That, that's what I thought, right? And right. this isn't to get down, but then it came to a point where, okay, you know, because we had to shut down, the economic impact, um, people losing jobs in our field and other fields, uh, people's lives getting flipped in a hundred some thousand dead, even though in Ohio it hasn't been, you know, anywhere near that. Um, you know, you go back and forth, Dre, be- between the whole, okay, sports is a distraction, is stupid, and like right now we would just like some sports back because, as I mentioned, like NASCAR and golf were rain delayed, and so right. I had nothing to do <laughs> as I tried to take right. my nap. <laughs> Right. Right. Like, right. As we you talk about the meanness and, and it being an election year, you know, makes and just what what social media has become and paid for in some regards. Um, it's so bad. But like I would just love, 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 love to be going to training camp four weeks from now. I would love to be driving home from training camp and listening to Tom Hamilton call the game. You know, I, oh. I'm just one person and it's not about me. But my life would be calmer, better. That that person who doesn't work in my field at all, who goes home and is working in his garage on whatever, and putting the kids to bed and is listening to Tom Hamilton, that would be great, right? Who pays to read The Athletic, and I actually have some training camp logs to write rather than the set, the 30-second list of hypothetical Browns players who are important <laughs> this season, <laughs> right? Like, so... Right. So I I, I I know I stumbled across what I'm trying to say here, but, like, man, sports are important. Like, baseball, get your shit together, you know? And, like, for those of us on the outside, understand that hockey getting back and football getting back and basketball getting back, there's going to be complications. You don't need to take a side on that. Just no. hope that the smart people are being smart and that the medical people are right and saying we can or can't go. And let's go. Let's get it. We'll all feel better. I I end end a bumbling want, rant, but do you get what at least what I'm trying to say here? I want yeah, I want sports extremely bad. I want them not only for personal, for obviously personally. Let's go. Like first of all, personally, I want them back not because of my bank account or not because of my job. I love my job, um, and I know there are a lot of people out there that that should be able to understand. There's a lot of people that aren't being able to do their job. Or even they're doing their job and you're doing it at home. And at first doing work at home was pretty cool, right? And now, like, it's nothing personal. I love my – I, like, 
I've, and I'll stick to this. Um, it's not all gloom and doom. I've had the best time of my life, you know, and I'm and I'm wholeheartedly being serious. Um, I've got to be around my son in a way that I've never been. My, you know, I took this job with the Indians when he was four months old. Um, so this has been the best summer ever. Um, it was the best Father's Day ever. Uh, I, you know, I had lunch with my dad and with my father-in-law. Uh, I got to spend most of the day with my son and my daughter. Um, I had to, I've had some of the coolest moments as a parent that I've ever that I'll ever have. Sandy Alomar texted me yesterday. We were saying happy, you know, saying happy Father's Day to each other, and he kind of said to me, you know, I had a couple different baseball people say, Trey, you know, Sandy Alomar has been in baseball his whole life. You know, his dad played, you know, and he was like, this is the first Father's Day I've ever had at home, man, and it's it's the coolest shit ever. And he told me. He's like, hey, enjoy this Father's Day because he goes, if we do right, we'll never have this opportunity again for a long time. Um, so that's the cool part about it. I want it back because, and I'm being honest with this, and I, and I kind of feel a little bit both ways with this. So I'm not steadfast like this is right and, and you're wrong or, or vice versa. Um, the word distraction. I want sports back because I love watching competition. I love doing my job. I love re- I, I prefer – reading Tom Reed back on the athletic telling stories about the Columbus Blue Jackets and about the Cleveland Browns stories that most of us wouldn't even think to, to go to or to think about, but they get so in depth that you learn about people and you learn about the science of the game or you learn about Jim Donovan, you know, whatever, you know, doing play by play. I miss you doing articles and telling me about some kid in training camp that I'm seeing, uh, you know, the CBD show. Tell me, is it to call that or is that the drug? Um, telling me about some kid, you know, some walk on kid, uh, some white 5'8 wide receiver that's just shaking the shit out of everybody in Berea. And I know he's got no chance of making a team, but I like reading them stories in August. Those stories get me going. Um, I miss all of that. But I'm going to say something that I know everybody won't agree with. There are times, Zach, where I'm like, you know, we need the distractions because all of us, I think, um, what we would u- when we would usually be watching Sports Center, when we usually be watching the eighth inning of a game, that doesn't matter. When we usually – when we watch an NBA playoff game that doesn't really matter to us, but it's playoff game, I think all of us are getting just overrushed with, with real world news. Um, and I think it's scaring the shit out of some people. And I think it's driving, I think me included. And on one hand, I'm like, yes, give me all the distractions in the world. Let us get back to our real world. But I'll be honest with you, and I'm not going Kyrie flat world on you. But, <laughs> um, I have questioned at times, and I know I've talked to some professional athletes about this, white, black, brown, of every different way. <laughs> um, do we really need distractions when our world is as fucked up as it is? And when I first had that question asked to me, I was, I was thrown off for a minute. And I'll admit to you guys, there are times where I wake up, and there's times where I look around and I read some shit and I have to get off social media, or I see some shit, or I hear some shit, and I question, and I'm, and I'm saying it right now as we do this podcast, I question if we really do need the distractions until we get a better compass of how to treat each other. Well, to that I would say, yes, we do. Because I just think, um, a good friend of mine is a principal at a school, and we were talking, and he was like, he also has kids of his own a little bit older than yours. And he used the term problem solving. He said, listen, my, my kids go get their shots up in the driveway when they can. They're, for the most part, they're very good. They, they listen to us and they might they throw a fit every now and again, but they do. He said, but when they are not around their friends, when they are not at school, when they are not at baseball practice, basketball practice, soccer practice, so there's no problem solving going on. They're not solving any problems playing dork night all day. He calls it dork night, and I, and I love that. <laughs> <laughs> right? And, like, all of us, again, the, the shitty people in this world and the Facebook warriors and philosophers, but especially the warriors, they were really dumb, closed-minded shitheads 110 days ago. And they might be worse now, yeah. but in most cases, they're not a lot worse. But, like, we're not solving any problems or growing or self-evaluating without something else, without taking a step back, you know, right? And that's not all stupid distractions or who won the game today between the Colorado Rockies and, and whoever they played. Right. But like, right. <laughs> so yes, it is different for me and you because we work in the sports business and my brother works in the sports business 
and our friends work in the sports business, whether they're high school coaches or sound yeah. guys or sports writers or radio talkers. Camera guys. Right. 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 We got all, all this stuff. But like the world, it it does. We, we need sports like capital need. If I was writing this right now, <laughs> we do. We do. And so, yes, there are more important things, but it goes back to all the discussions we've had, Dre. The, the, all the times we have to say there's more important things in basketball, we're already fucked in that discussion, right? Yeah, but I, I, yeah, I hear you. Like I said, I'm not, I'm not dead set one way or the other, but I'm not. Um, I'm just, I'm just, I'm being honest. I'm at a, I'm at a point in my life like I've never been before, and just be like, I'm just, I, I understand what your friend is saying. But how the hell do we can we expect our kids to do problem solving when we can't do right. problem solving? When we've allowed our world to become what it's become, and you know, and you know what? And I, and I'll admit this: this is part of the problem for me. Um, I can't allow the five percenters of uneducated assholes make my decision upon what America is. But unfortunately, that five percent seems to shout louder and scream louder Mm -hmm. and not wear masks and make life way more difficult for people than they should. So, yeah. I, and I, and like, look, I want my kids. So like as a parent, that's the hardest fucking part. And as a parent, that's why I have to sit at at different points in time. It's like, yeah, I want them to get back to their normal life. Yes. I want them to socially grow. Yes. I I want my son to hit home runs off of somebody else throwing them and not from me. Yes. I want to see my daughter be able to, to do gymnastics and things um, and, and continue to be this brilliant brain that she is. Yes, I want my son to be able to go beat up other kids and not nutshot me uh, when we're <laughs> wrestling. Yes, I, I want all of those things. I want to see my kids do the shit that I was able to do at five and seven years old. But I also don't want my kids living in this fucking world with all these fucking spaz, spazzing idiots that refuse to see to see what life is like for other people. Um, I'm, I'm be, being a parent. And watching this world be shitty has sucked. To be completely, it sucked because it's changed. It was like, like you're right. It was easy to say for me seven years ago. Yeah, there's way more important stuff than sports. But shit, I can't wait till that midnight. You know, to that ten thirty. You know, tip off of the Western Conference Finals. Um, and maybe, and maybe I do need the distraction. Like I said, I don't have all the answers, but I feel like this is a place where I can. I can be open and be myself and speak honestly. And I'm just speaking honestly. Um, I just, I keep saying, I want this to be a better place. I want, and the cool thing is, and maybe the distraction of sports, maybe the distraction of teamwork, and maybe the distraction of just being a fan of certain teams in certain places, um, because that's the one thing about sports. Um, Teams have common goals. I've been around teams that can't stand each other, guys that fight each other, guys that call each other pieces of shit. And then at seven o'clock they strap it up and and and, and they dominate. Mm-hmm. And I've seen teams that couldn't stand each other and called each other every bad name in the book, strapped it up, and at one o'clock they completely shit the bed and embarrassed themselves. Um, but their fans still came together and cheered as one, no matter what you know demographic they were from. Um, I'm just being honest, man. Life isn't as peaches and cream for me as it was 115 days ago. I wish it was. It's not. No, but I, I think I think it's the same for a lot of people. Um, I think if we didn't, if we haven't used this for some sort of reflection, right? And we've been talking about this all the way through. Um, right. You know, I, I've been working on this article going way back. And you guys have, um, have, have listened before. Uh, I've called the Maslin McKinley game the, the Super Bowl of people watching for years. And I mean that, right? <laughs> and I grew up where my dad and grandfather worked in Maslin, and Maslin was 15, 20 minutes away. And when you go there as a little kid, and Dre's talked about playing there as a teenager, like, it's unreal, right? Um, yeah. You know, if you've ever been to a Maslin McKinley game, even when you've gone on to to be around other levels of football, like, it's just something to you, right? So anyway, long story short. I thought they were going to win the state championship last year. So I started kind of working on this story. Like, what's it going to be like? Because if you know it all, like Paul Brown was there and Earl Bruce, not Earl Bruce. Yeah, Earl Bruce was there. Um, 
my brain is a little bit mush here on, on this Monday. It's no, morning slash right. afternoon. Anyway, they they once beat Kent State in a scrimmage 47 to nothing. But since the world changed and there's actual playoffs, Meslin has not won a state title. Well, when they didn't win the state title this year, I felt like I didn't have the story. Now, am I going to have to sit on it for 50 years? Am I ever going to write it? I don't know. <laughs> so fast forward, I have hours of research into this. Hours. Uh, I've mentioned my Maslin football book on here joking, but I, I have enough, right? <laughs> I do. Right. Or, or I'm starting to. So anyway, over the past several weeks, as it's been hard to find stuff to write about, I've reopened this. And I've called people tied to Maslin football, and I've said, you know, I've asked them other questions, but I've asked them all in one sense or another. Can you imagine a fall in Maslin, Ohio without football? And I've jokingly said to my friends, like, the town would disappear, right? Yeah. But I think, like, in this world, we're, we're, we're faced with that. And I'm not trying to be alarmist or doom and gloom. Um, the world has changed. <laughs> The world is not trending positively. There's that word again, trending. No, no. <laughs> and we'll get through I mean, it. And we are yeah. going to get through this. We're getting, we're getting through this, right? Even as you've mentioned, you've beaten yourself up and you've had sleepless nights and you've had awkward conversations with your kids and your friends and whatever. You're getting through this, right? There's sure. light. It's going to go on. I'm still laughing. I'm still laughing. I'm still having a good time. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm, you know, yeah, life is still, you're right. Life is still going on. And so I'm, I asked, And we're making it. Absolutely. Yeah. So I asked Rick Spielman, the GM of the Vikings, can you imagine a fall in Maslin, Ohio? Mm. And he said, Zach, I'm not trying to avoid your question, but I can't imagine a fall anywhere without football. I know. And if you're listening I to know. this podcast, you probably can't either. Right? As I look out I the know. window and I see seven other people throughout the houses throughout the neighborhood, and I don't really know them, probably a lot of them can live their lives without it. And will. Right? And there is light. Um, this is just a year like no other. And usually I get tired of these memes and most of them aren't funny to start with. I wish more of you would realize that, but like, man, this year fucking sucks. <laughs> yeah. You, you put out the best, uh, best meme you put out in a long time. Bro. About, um, taking from Cove. Oh, was that not the greatest tweet right, of all man. time? <laughs> It's, it's dead on, man. It's scary, Two days ago, this on. guy named Ran Ran Twenty Twenty. I got in front of me. That second wave gonna hit like all caps. Allow me to reintroduce oh. myself. My name is Cove. <laughs> <laughs> like, but you gotta you gotta uh, laugh, right? You know, for sure. I mean, when for when sure. Brody you used know, to teach like... special ed, right? He used to say to the kids, like, I have some kids that are sad stories, and my job ultimately is to just help them smile and help them be better in one aspect of their life. But if along the way you don't laugh, right? I mean, he was a high school teacher establishing a cuss cup, you know, like <laughs> you got to let the kids go at each other. You got to let them make fun of me. He would give them an assignment and they'd go, ah, oh, Jackson shit. Right. Like he would say, you got to <laughs> laugh. So I think that's what we all got to do here. And trust me, when we started yeah. this podcast, I didn't know what the hell we we're going to talk about. And trust me, when we finish this podcast, I'm going to work and work and hope that NASCAR doesn't get rained out today because I got nothing else to do. And I need some sports in my life. Right? Right. But, but like, And as you say that, <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, I, 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 don't, I don't have a kicker. This is not the end. Like, I don't know if this Maslin story is going to make it or not. I don't know if Maslin's going to have a football game on August 29th or November 19th or not. It's just strange, man. And, like, you got to find ways – to be positive, and you got to not allow yourself to drown in the negativity. You do, you, you have to. You're right. You're right. You're looking forward to watching that. All right, two things you said. The football thing, and somebody said this to me when this first started. They're like, if we don't get football in the fall, that's when people will freak out and realize how serious and crazy this is. And I remember saying to the person that told me, I was like, nah, people get it. If we don't have football – I mean, and I'm not, and I'm not, I don't want to, I want to have fun on this podcast. I really did. And we'll find a way to have fun before we get out of here. But I remember thinking like, no, nah, we'll be, by, by the time August, September comes around, we'll have this shit figured out. We'll be back to normal. As you said earlier. But as I think about it, you say masculine. Dude, think of like, what was the coach a long time ago? 
Remember the coach we had on from our favorite little division of football in Ohio? Cold water. Yes, Chip Oaten. Cold water. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, it's easy for us here, you know, in our, in our little town. Like, I'm hyped up. Like, I'm hyped up for one of my really good friends to be the head coach at Manchester High. And, damn it, if I'm in town, I'm going to go to my St. V games, but I'm going to go to Manchester games because I am going – to stand up, not for Zach Jackson and the Jackson family, but for a family friend of mine for, for my whole life, who's a head coach at Manchester, who I know is a great guy, who sometimes gets read the wrong way. And I think this is a great situation for him, even though that's the last place I'd want to go after the guy that he's going after and Coach France. But I want to support him. Like, I live in Wadsworth, and Wadsworth's got this great high school football program. They had the, the player of the year just a couple years back, not that long ago. Obviously, my ties in St. Vincent, St. Mary. I could go on and on about high school locally and what it means. And me watching kids that I know in my neighborhood that go to Highland and they're working out in their yard and they're doing drills by themselves and they've had some of their buddies over doing drills. Um, yeah, if we go through that period of time and we don't have football, it's going to change shit. But we can get through it. And then you say the other thing that you just said. I hope to God NASCAR is on today. <laughs> and then again, I don't because I don't know if I want to sit around and hear news stories from fucking NASCAR guys. Mm -hmm. and hear fucking people fight about the Confederate flag and then hear all the conspiracy theories that go left and right and back and forth. Is that as big a story if we had baseball, if I had a baseball game today in San Diego? I don't know. Probably. But I know my mind would have somewhere else to wander to. I don't have many other places for my mind to wander to today. So unfortunately, I get stuck down that rabbit hole of fuck. In 2020, supposedly, people are leaving nooses in trailers at NASCAR places. It's 2020 in a nutshell. Yes, I want the distractions. But at the same time, I don't yeah. know if I really, you know, like, Maybe people do need to hear about this. Maybe people do need, like, I had a friend tell me the other day, like, and the whole statue talk and changing names of places. Me, personally, I mean, it doesn't change much for me. It doesn't make life better. Race, racist people aren't going to suddenly not be racist because a statue isn't standing up. But at the same time, if we're, you know, we talk about glorifying certain things and certain people. If the glorification of someone that had slaves or, or whatever else bothers enough people and we're sick of learning about that in the history book and not learning about some of the true histories in our in our history book, maybe we don't need the distractions, Zach. That's all I'm saying. Like, Rob, I don't want to put Rob. Rob said something to me, and I won't put it all out there. And, and I know Rob's not racist. He's been my best friend since we were eight. But he was like, I didn't know such and such and such about this person, about this. He's like, fuck, man, we live in a fucked up place. What would we, we be paying attention to? What would we be paying attention to all that if we didn't have what's going on going on in our lives? Yeah, yeah. Uh, um. But then you open the door to all sorts of what if scenarios, right? I don't. I don't. Because everyone isn't intelligent enough to to read into these things, see what's going on, and say, "All right, you know what? That person wasn't a great person. Let's move on. Let's move on from that person, and let's all be better." Mm -hmm. Right? Because that's all we should do, right? Like, I don't know. Like, to me, if, like, if, if, if you came over my house and you were like, dude, that statue of blah, 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 or that flag that you're like, man, that makes me feel fucking uneasy. I don't know if I want to bring my, you know, my kids or my girlfriend or my wife or any of my other friends over, man. I don't want to make them feel like I felt. I'm pretty sure I'll be like, oh, my bad, Z. No problem, man. We'll, like, like, I don't want you to feel that way. Well, I usually bring my girlfriend, not my wife, to your house, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> well, no see, i know I Trey, you but, but you're talking about just like common decency that that's that's what you're talking about right like right. if you play music all the time right and yeah then i, I come I, i'm your neighbor three doors away and i say hey i hear your music and you're entitled to play your music but on wednesday you know on thursday mornings my wife has to get up at 5 a.m., so I would appreciate if on Wednesdays you would just not play the music or play it super low. Like common decency say, says. Bad. Right? Yes, my bad. You got it, Mr. Jackson. Sorry about that. No Correct. problem. Because that's just looking out for your neighbor. That's just being a decent human, right? Right, right. Perfect example, by the way. That's a great example. Yeah. That's exactly it. 
That's yeah. exactly it. If I'm playing my music too loud or whatever else, or like, and you just say simply to me, hey, man, you know, we got to get up early. We got a young kid. Could you turn that down a little bit for us? No problem. I would love to be able to help you. I'm sorry that I made a distraction for you. Let's keep moving. Mm. That's how it should be. And we should be able to move on. The problem is it ain't going like that. <laughs> it's like, no. Everybody doesn't feel that way, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, you talked to Kareem Hunt today. <laughs> talked to Kareem I'll Hunt move, today. And a question was posed to him about um, <laughs> using his <laughs> incident, you know, which is the latest in a long line of incidents, but he was not charged. <laughs> Um, you know, as, <laughs> as a way to better himself. And his answer was, if he says so. so that, um, yeah. And again, like, but this is in, in the long list of Kareem Hunt story. That's, that's a blip on the radar. Um, I was talking to my new boss this morning, right. And we had just, it was in the hour between getting notified that Kareem was going to talk and Kareem actually talking. And he was like, you expect a, a story, out of this, like something pressing or unique, or are we just going to maybe use the content somewhere else down the road, right? Because we, right. we we have to plan, you know, for about four more weeks before camp, right? right. It, it, it what's traditionally the dead time for the NFL anyway, and the time that you formally take your vacation and what uh, under company rules you kind of have to, whatever, blah 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 blah. So I just told him like, you know, a year ago you wrote Kareem Hunt's name and you got five hundred comments because everybody had a side. Right. right. True. Now I, I'm not sure. And I think we look at Kareem Hunt as someone who's certainly flawed, someone who's made mistakes. But in the world of football, he's someone who's super talented. If the NFL says he can play and the Browns say they can employ him, then that's what they say. And he's a year away from free agency where 31 other yeah. teams will have to look at Kareem Hunt's character and baggage and past and judge his future. Right. And I don't know. He might fuck up before then. He might not. You should keep him until he does. Hey, yeah. man. Um, speaking of, I'm glad that, that's a good way to go with this. He, like you, you, you wrote about Chubb in the running back situation in Minnesota. I want to say a week ago. You wrote yeah, about, about that? a week ago. Um, and I think, and you know me, and I'm, you know, I, I'm pro running back. You know, I'm always going to stand up for running backs. But I've been screaming from the mountaintop. The vision and the and the face of the Cleveland Browns should be Nick Chubb. Absolutely. I, he, he's everything that's right with the Cleveland Browns, in Absolutely. my opinion. And I'm not – this isn't a battle towards anybody else. Nick Chubb, to me, is what – if I am paying the bills with the Cleveland Browns, he is the guy that I want to stand up front. He's not going to say a lot, so he's not going to embarrass me. <laughs> he's just going to work his ass off, right? Mm-hmm. But – and you just talked about Kareem Hunt having him, and his contract's going to be up. The conversation of paying a running back is such a um, – it's a real one, right? Like, sure. He, like, we're talking about Miles Garrett. And to me, Miles Garrett should get paid. He should get paid whatever he's owed. Oh, um, Baker Mayfield's going to be up. We all know this is a huge year for Baker Mayfield uh, to find out who and what he is and, and, and if he is that franchise quarterback and if you're willing to give him, you know, the moon – like you do for franchise quarterbacks. But there shouldn't be many questions about paying Nick Chubb, but there always will be, won't there? Sure. Um, now, I would say in a bigger picture, as I'm glad we're talking a little football here, like these are good problems to have. I mean, Jerry, what struck you from that story? Because to me it was three first-rounders and three second-rounders have signed second contracts with the team. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's that's – Scary. And yes. when you talk about the Miles Garrett thing, which has been out there and which is going to get done at some point, um, I totally understand the no rush and let's let Miles do this and let, let's let's let Miles have 22 sacks and change two games for us and then pay him. However, when you're trying to get functional and trying to enter a realm that you haven't been anywhere close to, frankly, in a lot of regards, why not get it done now and let that be part of your budget and planning going forward? Because you know you're going to pay him. Right. Amen. I sw- uh, you, yes, this on uh, Miles Garrett. I pay him now. Stop all this proving this shit. He, I, I pay him because why even risk him going out having twenty five? And you got to pay. I mean, you're going to pay him unbelievable yeah. money anyway. Yeah, and listen, well like, take care of the guy. You drafted him. The the standard contract, you know, v- suspensions void guarantees. 
And Miles is going to have to deal with the fact that some offensive linemen out there, and not just on the Pittsburgh Steelers, are ready to cut him when they shouldn't be cutting him. They are ready mm-hmm. to hit him after the play. They are, right? Absolutely. And yep. there could be at any time a spat where any other NFL player either gets 15 and gets ejected or gets suspended for one week. But if Miles participates in any bullshit, he's going to get triple the penalty. He's got to know that. But the Browns have right. to operate accordingly and go do that. I completely agree with you right now, Jerry, that on June whatever, 2020, Nick Chubb is the best player on the Browns. Nick Chubb is the guy the Browns should be, want to be about. And if Nick Chubb has a big season, then that should be the ticket to opening up everything else for the offense and everybody kind of growing together and all this uncertainty in the locker room, in the world, with the team, with the first-year guys in charge, the youngest GM in history, and another first-time head coach, and another first-year situation. Right? Like, if Chubb has a good year and he drives things, things should be good. Now, over time, maybe Miles is your best player. Over time, you got to get other things right, and, and all these things got to mold together, you know? Um, right. But Nick Chubb is just really freaking good, and – I would pay him and do it, and probably that means Kareem moves along. Um, sitting here talking about it, you know, you probably – Kareem is always one strike away, and the fewer of those guys on your team, right. the better. Right? Yeah, I hate agreeing with that, but you're absolutely right. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's true. It's true. Especially if, you, especially if you can put somebody – if you have somebody better. Let, what, I mean, let, let's all right, let me say this. Real world, real world talk. Real yeah. world talk. We want Kareem to succeed. We do. But in reality, like you said, I can't put my fortune and put everything down on trusting him day in and day out. So, mm-hmm. no. Like, good team, like, coaches and GMs and people that work for organizations, they forever live in fear of being woken up at that th- by that 3 a.m. phone call from the cops for whatever yep. reason. Yep. Right? But the teams that are the best from year to year, those coaches and GMs sleep a little better. Right? It can happen to anybody. No doubt. It has happened to anybody. And what the kid from the Giants and the kid from where, where was the other kid from? Seattle. They had yeah, all those yeah. outrageous charges against them. They might stick and they might never play again. Or it might, we, right. we don't know. Right? But like the fewer that shit you have hanging out there, just generally the better you are. Right? Better chance you got to be successful. Yeah. 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 Um, We'll see what happens with the Browns, and we agree that there's enough talent for them to be interesting, tantalizing, whatever other adjective you want to use right now. But the, one of the problems with these regime changes is you come out and you say, we want smart, tough, accountable. Well, until you get the guys together and go through a year, a normal year, even one without all these things in the world, and you see who really is smart, tough, and accountable, you really don't know who you want on your team and then who you'll tolerate having on your team. So right. I think the Browns could get hot offensively and make the playoffs. I really believe that. I think the Browns could also be six and ten. We'll see. <laughs> I agree. And just going off of that, um just overall I guess the other thing I want to get at is after seeing what the Rams did, remember we had the conversation about how much running back is worth. Mm-hmm. And I, I hate talking you know, I hate I'm not a, I hate talking money and I hate because some people just see certain numbers and they lose their mind. I don't know why. It's not coming out of your bank account. Um, I think after you saw what happened, and I can't think of his name right now, the other Georgia running back that's with the Falcons now. I can see him with the G. Um, Todd Gurley. He played for the Rams. And then, yeah. Gurley. Todd so Gurley signed that huge contract, and obviously the Rams, after two years, and after we all know something was not right either between him and the head coach, him because the head coach was calling the plays, or his knees and arthritis was taking over his knees, whatever it may be, they were able to get out of a contract that guaranteed him like 35, and I don't have the numbers right in front of me. They can guarantee him a lot of money, right, Zach? So to me, like, you pay Chubb, and you find a way, and you can do it. You guarantee 30 or whatever, and you find a way that if he gets hurt or if it doesn't work out, that you, you pull the sheets from underneath him and you get out of it, right? Like, I just don't understand, like, why, like, and, and you don't have to do it now, but even in the Minnesota situation. And, I, and look, the Minnesota, and I like that running back, but he's killed my fantasy team two years because he blew out his knee one year and he had a hamstring injury the other year. Now, the one year where he's been good, he changed their offense and helped Kevin Stefanski get a head coaching job. So I understand why he's sitting out, but it's like, dude, your history says it's hard to trust you. Like, physical wise and that's what sucks for running backs. Chubb thus far, knock on wood, and we can thank 
um, your uncle, Coach Jackson, for not playing him at all early on in his <laughs> yes. career. <laughs> like, I mean, you remember the one game he had 100 yards with like five carries against the Raiders and they wouldn't keep him in? Yeah. That's no here nor there. I'm not trying to kill Hugh Jackson. The point is, because he shared carries with Georgia, because your coach wouldn't play him the first six, seven games of his rookie year, and he's only going to be 24, I believe I read, uh, at the end of next season. I just I know we're a year ahead of time, but after I read that article, I wanted to call you and be like, dude, pay him. Pay him, and you worry about it later. Just yeah. my feeling. Well, by, by rule, you can't pay him till next year. It's after the third right. year. But, yes, I agree. I agree with you on that. Um, one last thought as we're talking a little sports here. If you're still listening – Thank you. Um, thanks, guys, for your support through this and for asking us for more podcasts and for doing it. We look forward to getting back to, to doing it um, more often and, and actually having some stuff to analyze and argue about and all of these things. Um, this is how real it is. So the life of an NFL scout or, you know, personnel director, assistant personnel directors, like you work your ass off up to the draft and then through the draft, right, because there's generally a lot of transactions going along right signing undrafted guys and then you drafted a guy so a veteran becomes available and does he fit you did you always need a veteran there did you not get to draft a guy in the third round to shore up your safety spot your defensive tackle spot whatever it may be and then you know there's kind of a wind down period like there is for everybody but OTAs start and so if you're a college scout you generally spend some time around the team you work for because you watch and practice and you start looking not only at what your team's perceived deficiencies are on the roster, but in how you're coaching. And this is where the Browns have fallen behind changing every year. Because if your your safeties coach and your defensive coordinator like guys that can do a certain thing, then they put you on the trail and they find that, right? And then you go back and you you get a start on basically the top guys for the for the next year's class and just a feel for, okay, if you know your team is gonna need safeties, linebackers, a quarterback. You dive into those guys right away because you want to have as much research done as you can. Well, this is real, guys. Like, scouts are working overtime. They're, they're normally going on vacation right now, but they are working overtime on next year's draft class just in case there's no college football. This, is multi- this isn't this is a single out one scout Ooh. or one team. Ooh. This Ooh. is multiple guys that I've talked to that are saying, you know, not well, obviously we weren't going on our big trip to such and such place because of COVID. However... I'm not playing golf four days a week or I'm not taking that long weekend back visiting my parents because we are grinding this stuff because we have to be ready. So right. anything's in play. Don't sprain your ankle, that's jump crazy. to conclusions either way. That's all I got. Right. No, that's crazy. I didn't even think of that. Yeah. I mean, we watched that with the baseball draft, and I know the baseball draft and we make fun of it. Not mm-hmm. nearly as uh, put together, but and even talking to Chris Antonetti and different people, it's like the concentration they had to have on the draft was so different, but maybe it, maybe it made them better. But now you just said something that I hadn't even thought of. What if you have to draft again in April without barely seeing guys play? Or yeah. what if, like, I mean, just, and I don't want, like you said, I'm not jumping to conclusions and spraining my ankle. What if you have to recruit for a kid that doesn't play his senior year in football? Um, you're going to find, you're going to find out if your scouts are as good as you think they are <laughs> in all sports. Well, you're sure. You just, you, you got to be ready. I mean, look, we said this all along to the seniors that, that lost their senior season, uh, you know, there's just nothing you can say except sorry. Um, it'll always stick with you. But to anybody else still playing, like this is the ultimate lesson that you've got to be ready, right? Yeah. Um, I believe it – didn't the NBA open it back up and say, hey, you guys got to a certain time to rethink your decision? I mean, that that's smart. But you're right. Like the baseball draft yeah. only went five rounds. A lot of guys didn't get drafted, and they said, we'll go back. So – you know, the smart teams, I think, will win. It, it, generally in sports, the smart teams win anyway, right? Yeah. But you've got to be ready for anything. And, and every year in the football draft, Dre, a mock draft comes out in May because somebody needs to fill content, and like six of those guys <laughs> end up being first-rounders. Some of it's right, injury, right. Well, some of it's remember. character, some of it's the evaluation was just so incomplete, right? Right, um, well, but it's real, and that's well, what's going people, on, and people are being yeah. prepared for every type of scenario. That's for sure. All right. Some people make you pay eight fifty, you know, eight fifty a month, and they don't even know what's going on two days before the draft. Um, anyway, <laughs> okay, we got to go. Um, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it, it is serious. <laughs> Four weeks away from the season starting. Um, I heard Jake Trotter on the Riz show earlier today uh, when I was driving out 
to take care of some business I had to take care of this morning. And he made a good point, and I'm curious from your point uh, of view, because even for me, I'm kind of in, in this crazy boat. If we get back to you, and you talked about talking to some of your bosses, do we still have any idea how you're going to cover or how you're going to be allowed to cover or what we're like, what do we, do you have any idea, I guess, of how coverage will work and how getting players and access will work? Or are we still in the dark completely on that as well? No, a week and a half, two weeks ago, we got a memo from the professional football writers association that basically said the standard, do this, do that. We hope you're well, we hope you're healthy. Um, in the bottom of it was we, we have no, we're working, but we have no clue how it's going to go. Um, we're not going to be in locker rooms. Are we going to be at games? No. Um, are we going to be able to fully observe training camp, even if it's from 150 yards away? I, I don't know. You know, will there be any in-person interviews if it's one-on-one and, and you sit eight feet away? I don't I hope so. Uh, I don't know that, you know. Um, does it make sense to go to games if there's no in-person interviews, if you're taking on risk? Right. I, we, we don't know any of that. And again, like, right. it just comes down to guys like, there's going to be awkward getting the, getting camps started. How awkward, we don't know. Is it going to be worse in certain areas? We don't know because players right now are spread all across the country um, and are going back to wherever it is. We know the NFL is basically in all four corners uh, of, of the country. Um, you know, I, I don't think that five players testing positive uh, coming back shuts anything down, but – Keeping no. guys contained and, and getting a plan that meets all the standards and keeps people safe over the course of a five week minimum, maybe more like seven or eight week training camp. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I needed this podcast. And I, and I know some people won't get or like everything that was said, but I just feel like if you don't get some things off your chest, you're not going to be a healthy person. Um, I'm not that I'm the most healthy. I'll just stop and get some beer now. Um, <laughs> I just think, you know, like, like I wasn't trying to get gloom and doom with you. I want sports back. I want some normalcy back. I really do. Um, I did, if we knew more about this virus, like five people getting it wouldn't be a big deal, right? If you wouldn't know that everybody would bounce right back. I mean, we all know, like we see 98% or 99%, you know, people recover. But then you, all it takes is one other story of hearing one person or a young person. Like, I don't know. Do you know Dio Hoogley is? You may or may not. You probably do and don't realize you don't. He's yeah, I know the name, but I, the I can't put a face to it right now. Yeah. Yeah. So Friday night here, Thursday night, he's in uh, he's in Tennessee doing stand-up. Starts slurring his words, passes out. Didn't know anything was wrong with him. You know, and everybody thought he died at first. Everybody thought he was having a stroke. And he goes to doctors, they run all the tests, they say he was dehydrated, what they say about all people with a lot of money when they, you know, when things don't go right. <laughs> and then they said they did a COVID test. <laughs> I'm glad you picked that up. Um, but then they did a COVID test and he came back positive. And he's asymptomatic, cinematic, and he didn't have any idea. And he's like, kind of like, I've been fine. I've been doing my radio show. I came and did this. And now they tell me I've got COVID. And it's like, well, what do I, you know, like, and then you see pictures of what people's lungs, what would have happened to some people's lungs. Like I read a tweet earlier today, we keep hearing people say, oh, big deal if, a, if an athlete gets it. Um, you know, they won't die from it. Well, most likely they won't, but every 10, 20%, there's one that pops up and it really fucks up their body, and it fucks up their body for the long term. Um, I just, We said this 50 days ago, we said it 100 days ago. Just wish we had more information and knew exactly what it would do to every person, and we don't have that. Yeah, um, we don't, so... We'll see. We're, we're going to live with it. We know that. And the unknown is the scariest part. Uh, we thank you guys for listening. As you start making your July 4th plans, we hope you hit up American Fireworks. Um, we hope you're telling your friends and family as we do get hopefully some sports back. Um, people get back to their normal routines to listen to A to Z, to subscribe to The Athletic. Um, and hopefully Andre's smiling mug will be back on TV more often sooner than later. But um, I don't know. I don't know shit. <laughs> <laughs> None of us do. American Fireworks. I'm coming. I'm bringing my. I'm bringing my neighbor. Uh, anybody that don't like drinking them, but like like lighting off fireworks, I'll tell you some great stories. Let me know. Hit me up. <laughs> Otherwise, I got to make Zach do it. I don't know if Zach will be able to do fucking be able to write with a little stub on one hand. <laughs>
I got enough limitations on a normal day. That's for sure. So <laughs> thank, thank you guys for listening. Uh, maybe we'll do another one this week. Maybe we won't. We, we really don't know. We're waiting like everybody else. Stay healthy. We, be kind. Yeah, we're going to try to do another one this week only because this is a big sports week. I think we're going to find out a lot in the next 24, 48 hours uh, about what's coming. So hopefully by the end of the week, uh, we'll put something together, hopefully. If we can find the time and he can stay off the golf course and maybe my black ass will go on the golf course. Who knows at this point? Everything's a toss-up at this point. Kenichiwa 2020. Get the fuck out of here. See ya.